You're probably like me. You just went out and spent a bunch of money on a new Honda at a K Pro. Now you need to do something about it. You can take it to the dyno, get it tuned. Obviously, to even get it there, you need a base map. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your base map so you can get it started and drive it around. Make sure you got no fluid leaking or unforeseen problems that you want to have while you're on the dyno. You get there, you got to push the car on the trailer, push it off the trailer, push it on the dyno. Hear them cry because you forgot to hook something up right or you got something leaking or you didn't do something just right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a base map for the K20, the K24, pretty much anything k swap it'll work on. Give me a few seconds, and I'll get started. Alright, first to get started, you need to go to hondata.com. When you get there, you need to download the K-Pro app, get it all downloaded to your computer, put the little desktop on your computer. Come on, it's down here in the corner. You literally get the downloaded over here, double click on it, wait for it to come up. Alright, my computer, I got it a little different than everybody else, but I got my display all set up so you can read all your gauges. I usually say go in there, do all that first, so when you go to start your car, you know what everything's doing, you kind of, basically kind of like data logging it, but basically on site, you can kind of see what's going on, you're not just guessing like, I hope it's running good, that's why you throttle your RPM, your map sensor, your duty cycle, pretty much everything you see is what you need. First, to get started, you need to go up here, where it says new calibration, click on it, Depending on what kind of motor you got, you kind of got options. Honda gives you a bunch. You get over here, it gives you a drop down bar. Now, depending on what kind of car you got, what kind of motor you got, kind of depends. Sorry, my phone's kind of blurry. But pick the one you want. Like if you got a K20A2, which I have, you're going to want that one. I usually just run like the stock tune and just start changing stuff. People would mess with the other tunes. Usually don't use them unless you personally know that person or you've used it before because if it runs funny there could be a reason you don't know why the factory tune usually runs perfect all right let me pick the one for my car give me one second all right i decided to go this k20a2 with colder intake tune it's probably just a stock tune to my just made like five or ten more horsepower but if you're not using this motor i have go up here to your bar click it you can run a different like basically different maps depending if you have like the base rsx motor the ep3 motor s2000 look like they have a d17 so they pretty much have it for any car if you're on a k24 go down here to the bottom it says other vehicles click that one there's only a few options but i'd rather take a few options and no options so basically if you have a stock motor i'd probably go with the bottom tune or the third tune from the top because depending on what injectors you have, if you have the 270s, you need to run that one. If you have the t three, uh, yeah, 310 injectors, you need to run that one. Depending on if you have the TSX motor, the Accord motor, kind of be careful. If it don't run or it will start up and run crappy, that's probably why. You have the wrong injector all set. I'm going back up here. I need to go need back to the top. I can't see. I don't know. All right, give me one second. All right. I got back in the RSX Type S mode. I'm getting the K21 with the colder intake dyno tune. Basically, just go on top, double click it. Count bridge and let it just bring itself up. Go up here to the parameters, make sure it's actually in there. All right, depending on what kind of stuff you're doing, like I'm doing a turbo car, so depending on what you got. Either way, you need to go in here and it take all the stuff off. Like there's an immobilizer, and there's another thing. It's called the multiplexer. You need to go over here to this one. The multiplexer, turn off. Regardless of what you're doing, turn it off. 
disable it definitely without that your car will not run you're gonna be sitting there cranking it for ten thousand times it's not gonna start it. over here make sure the mobilizer is not enabled usually i turn all the other stuff off because usually you don't need it turn off the o2s and all the random stupid stuff if not your car's gonna be turning stuff on and you're not gonna want that depending on what transmission you have you need to also check a speed sensor if you had just a regular speed sensor this means like the ep3 and the odd ones like that if not like me i have the counter structure one i have the six speed transmission which means you need to use the counter stress so go down here and click on it you go back up here to the map sensor mine's actually got a four bar so you need to go down here find what the setting is all right give me one second it will be I got a K tune one, but I don't think they actually have it in the settings. So I believe last time I just went down with the Honda Armory Bar. Like that one. Now my injectors are definitely different, so I need to go up here, click on the injectors. Depending on what you have, you're gonna change this too. Right now it says you have three tens. I'm running twenty two hundred, so definitely a big difference open 2200 if you have like 1000s or just random ones let me click that first click here to the injector voltage dead time quick select All right, my camera keeps zooming out weird. I think my camera's dirty. I busted my lens, so my camera has a bunch of cracks. So if you think my screen looks weird, it's bad on my side. But no, 3.71 is what it calls for. Over here, now I need 8.09 needs 1.81. You go up here to it again, you double click on it. 81. All right, the next one, double click. It needs 1.27. And actually, you can see it, if it zooms out, it's actually over there. The next one needs to be 0 0.84. I'm going to try that one too. Cool. All right, 16, you need 0 0.045. Four five. All right, all right, cool. This is my all sets of mine. Yours is probably different. I think so. Well, that's for twenty two hundred D twerk. So if you have similar ones, they're probably the same or very close. It's easiest to go online and just Google it. All right, what else did I forget? When you go out into your car, you need to change a bunch of stuff, like your gear compensation. You need to get in here where it says select ratios. My car has. Where's that? Usually, if you had an EP3 or a 5 speed tranny, go with the RSX one. Uh, this one, I believe, is the 6 speed, but it reads it the other way. Mine has the transmission that.
All right, remember what I forgot. Go up here to the closed loop. That's next to the boost control. You need to come over here. It's usually stuck on built-in wideband. I don't have any O2 sensors, so I'm going to go up here and hit disable. All right, it's clear. Go down here. Turn that off. Sorry, I can't see. Disable. Disable. I think I left that all in last time. Pretty sure it's all adjusted. Let me go double check, double check. All right, then we're back outside. Go ahead, bring the make sure the Honda is still up. Hook your little printer cable up to your computer and run over to the Honda. Make sure you go over to your car, turn your key to the on position. Go over here where it says ECU Connect. Click it. All your tables should be up in green. A couple of them are cold because it's obviously very cold outside. But if you did it right, you go up here where it says online. Up oh, there it is on my phone. Alright, that's very, very blurry. Well, it's the third one from the top. Uh, I'll you can see it on my phone. Click on it, or it says upload. It's at the top. Give me one sec. Alright, if I can read that now. At the top, it sort of says upload. Click on it. You'll see the little bar going through. You have a fuel pump come on. Now it's saving the calibration. Go back to your ignition. Cut it off. Cut the key back to the on position. Go over here to your ECU connect thing. Turn it back on. And hopefully everything should be working. See my voltage is a little low. It has worn outside a little bit, but it's still pretty cold. If everything has worked, go up here. To make your cars in neutral. Turn the key to on. Should start. All that hard work and money you went through, that will all work. Hopefully this helps everybody out. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm trying to get some bigger builds, but with money being short and stuff, it's hard to do a hundred things with no money. I do have a lot of things coming up. We're going to the dyno, so look forward to it. We know it runs like i said if y'all have any problems you're doing your tune you can't get the work just shoot me a comment or shoot me a message i'll sure to get back to you as short as i can all right guys have a good day all right now we need to adjust the tps sensor sorry my phone's very blurry up at the top that's where it says throttle it's right there click on it go over here to where it says read I'm going to show you my phone to zoom in, but it's very blurry. Alright, where it says read, the top one is where it's basically we don't touch the throttle pedal. Just hit it, see where it comes up. Mine says negative 4.3. It's normal, don't worry about it. Go ahead and hit your gas pedal and floor it. Now hit read again.
Obviously, mine says 101.3. It's a, it's common. Don't really worry about it. Hit the gas like four or five times and make sure the gas pedal is totally unloaded. The pedal ain't stuck. You don't have it binded up somewhere. Like, you put it all in there, then something's touching, and then you're like, oh, no, my throttle's way different. Hit it again, floor, and hit read. It's still right the same thing. Now go up here to where it says read the top one. Hit it again. It's still the same. But go up here now. Online. Hit upload. Go back. Turn your heat off. Key back to on. Go up there to where it says EC connect. Click on it. It's all good. I would leave mine on my display. That way if you're trying to look at stuff. It's easy to have all your stuff. You need your RPM, your throttle, your map sensor, the air fuel, the injectors, the duty cycle, then uh, timing, intake sensor, the coolant temp, speed sensor, battery, pretty much everything. I even got the boost controller down here. That way if you're having weird things with the boost controller, you can see how much duty cycle you got or it's even coming on. I do got my check engine light down here too. That way if you got an odd light on, you're like, oh, I didn't see it on my dash, but it's on your computer. So gives you options. Alright, before I get sidetracked and forget, definitely go up here to where it says file. You need to save it, because if you don't save it, you're going to be SOL. Get down here, hit save as, click on it. Me, I usually have a bunch of tunes pre-saved, but just save it under the file. I usually put a date, the car, and the motor. That way, if you're messing with something, and the next day you mess with something else, it's hard to remember from two months ago, like, oh, it was a Tuesday, like... Oh, well, what month was it like? I don't remember. This way, if you got problems, you can go to a tune from the day before, the day after, and have lots of options. You're not just stuck with whatever's running that day. All right, like I said, make sure you save it, and have a good day, guys.